you or let you know that there are moments in Purgatorio and Paradiso that will respond to some of the questions that inevitably you have when you read Inferno. All right, let's work level two and three really quickly for this canto. At 2A, well, some major messages. Obviously, you got the, the way you get lost is, is very, very slowly. Notice this one, right? It's almost like they say the way if you want to boil a frog. You don't throw a frog in boiling water. He does what? Jumps out. You want to boil a frog? Put him in cold water and just put the, put the, uh, the water on simmer and then just turn up the heat slowly, slowly, slowly. It's a famous word picture, right? Notice another message here. We need a guide sometimes. You can't get out by yourself. In other words, you got to have help. you got to have a guide. And obviously, Dante, the writer, will be making this point. Finally, of course, you got to go through hell to get to heaven. You got to go down to get up to go up. We learned this with our study of St. Augustine, didn't we? At level 2b, we said we were going to concentrate on symbolism and then irony. Let's think about it. On the symbolism side, well, the dark wood of error obviously symbolizes that situation one is in. Some have said he's having his midlife crisis in the middle of one's life, but anybody can be caught in the dark wood where you're kind of like lost. We live close to mountains and woods. We can appreciate what that means. Of course, we have the three animals. And lots of debate among scholars about what these represent or symbolize. The leopard, as we said, might represent issues of um, worldly pleasure, sometimes referenced as lechery or lust. Incontinence is the first circle of hell. Florence is sometimes understood here. That Dante is, in fact, passing judgment on his old town that threw him out and exiled him. The lion, ambition, pride, sometimes understood maybe as violence, um, certainly France is the way some scholars will see this if you're looking for an actual place for symbolism. And then finally the she-wolf, avarice, covetousness, greed, right? We think about Chaucer and his partner um, who will only preach on one sermon, right? Um, and some, of course, have likened this to the whole notion of the third circle of hell, uh, fraud. Some have said that maybe he's referencing uh, Dante, even as a Catholic, is going to reference the corrupt papacy. Uh, the Hound, well, you know, some will say that this is maybe an individual that Dante, a friend of his, that he had great hope that he would help. Some have seen this as a referencing of the church. The ironies involved at, th at, two, at to be, well, Virgil, when we're told, hey, Virgil is horse. Either he's horse because he hasn't spoken a long, uh, long time or no one's listening to him anymore. In other, in other words, Dante will say, not only was I lost, but I think my, I think my culture is also lost. We'll pick up with this when we meet T.S. Eliot. We are the hollow men. We are the stuffed men. Another irony is, of course, that Dante was lost, but he didn't know, right, how he got there. It's one of those weird things where I know I'm lost, but I'm not exactly sure how I ever got here. Now, we said or promised that we would work with Dante and consider Dante as poet, politician, philosopher. Let's just comment really quickly. As poet, Dante is paying, obviously, a reverence to what he considers to be the greatest poet of all time, Virgil. As politician, he's already seeming to make some observations about the culture of his day as being somehow corrupt. There's something wrong with it. As philosopher, notice already he's making those observations that we would qualify as epistemological. If you want to know something, you're going to have to go through a lot of pain to get there. That is to say, some kind of journey. And you really don't appreciate what you have until you don't have it. Like, for example, your ship has been wrecked and there you are at sea and then you see the land and you're trying to swim to get to the land. Then and only then can you really appreciate right, what it is that you don't have. All right, let's jump to level three quickly. At 3A, well, think about this one in terms of other texts. Here we have Dante the Pilgrim, but he is an epic hero going on an epic journey. No question about it. We have the challenge to overcome suffering, and in that moment we understand him to look and sound very much like Achilles, Odysseus, Aeneas. By some extension you could say, of course, Gilgamesh, you could say Beowulf, and all of those epic heroes that we've studied already. What is for you a text? about finding your way, about being lost and finding your way. I mean, obviously, a St. Augustine's Confessions comes to mind, but we can, we can pretty much, we're going to be able to say St. Augustine's Confessions about almost every canto that we study in Inferno. I want to throw a title at you that we've not yet mentioned, Pilgrim's Progress. It's a really important title. Do a little bit of Google research on this one. We don't read this one in AP, but it is a classic story about what it means to go on a sacred journey. Of course, we know that Chaucer himself constructed his Canterbury Tales around the idea of a religious pilgrimage or a journey, right? Finally, at 3b, 
Well, what was a time, you knew this was coming, right? What was a time that you all of a sudden discovered that you were lost, lost in the dark wood? You, don't, you didn't know how you got there. But all of a sudden you're like, wow, I guess I've kind of given up. Addicts will often make this observation. I accept that I am an addict. I accept that I'm an alcoholic. I'm just not sure at what point I really started down the wrong road. It's kind of gotten fuzzy for me in my mind. What's a time for you when you kind of realized you were lost? What's a time for you when you realized that you needed a guide, that you needed help, that you needed somebody to kind of help you get through an experience? Of course, that's one of the first major things that you got to do if you're ever going to get out of the dark wood is you got to accept, I may need some help here. I don't know if I can do this all by myself. All right, well, that's Canto 1. We'll now continue with Canto 2. And because Canto 1 is kind of an introduction, Canto 2 is really technically, we kind of like to think of, as the beginning, actually, of Inferno. Here we're going to have a couple of important things. No shock, we're going to have an invocation of the muse. We know what that's all about because of our identification with that very same kind of thing in the Iliad, the Odyssey, and the Aeneid. And we're also going to figure out why Virgil was sent to Dante in the first place, and we're going to hear about Dante's love, Beatrice, right? Okay, guys, I, uh, we'll see you back in a little bit, and we'll continue with Canto 2. Thank you.